Yo, if you've been watching this channel, you know that uh, I'm a huge fan of ELS. I've been using this for a while. This is uh, the Namimno 900 Hz uh, module. And 900 Hz is amazing. It gives you a lot of range. It gives you this for low power. It's really nice, but I want to enjoy the full extent of ELS. And the full extent of ELS, the full extent of the development, the 500 hertz uh, refreshment uh, rate this comes with this and this is uh, the 2.4 gigahertz uh, um, ELS module from beta FPV the 1 watt version in this video I'm going I'm going to unpack this uh, to talk about it to set it up um, update it to the actual uh, last version of ELS and not the beta FPV fork I'm going to talk about that later in this video stay tuned and uh, then in another video i'm going to review this uh, after a while of flying with it uh, with both uh, this whoop that i'm going to talk about in another video as well and my main quad that i'm switching as soon as tomorrow to 2.4 gigahertz so subscribe to this channel to be sure not to miss them and let's talk about that Okay, so once again, this is the Beta FPV uh, 1 Watt 2.4 GHz ELS module. As you can see, uh, this is a module. It comes in black. Uh, Will the present iteration of it, the 500 milliwatt version, uh, was white? So if you see black, this is a 1 Watt version. We can see here uh, the new bigger fan, the OLED display uh, with the joystick fully functional, uh, even out of the box, we'll talk about that later. The USB-C port for date, uh, the XT30 uh, input for um, dedicated power input. You will need that for long range because this module uses a lot of power. And uh, here, uh, regular uh, GRBA connectors so you can just plug that into your regular uh, remote deep uh, switches the, this is new uh, you can use that for different uh, function uh, we're going to see that when uh, we're going to do the update uh, just now uh, regular 2.4 GHz uh, dipole antenna, USB-C cable, and a bit of uh, goodies, we're going to see that, but, uh, but FPV uh, user manual and a QR code for the website. We got uh, a little uh, cable, GST connector to Dupon connector. Uh, this is used, I think it is, uh, for using this module with a remote that doesn't support uh, the GR connection out of the box uh, because this is a CRSF plus and uh, gone from the schematics of the module. Then we got uh, this pigtail SMA to MMCX. Uh, this is for the Moxa antenna that uh, that is just here. And you can see that it is much much uh, smaller uh, than the corresponding 900 hertz uh, version of it. Yeah, it's a bit weird to have this protection on the MM6 connector. Yep, just need to press it in and you hear the click and this is it. You're ready to use uh, this antenna. Uh, basically, this is the regular FV trade-off. Uh, with the Moxon, you're going to trade a bit of uh, angle for more range and penetration. Um, 
it's the opposite of uh, the dipole that is going to get you more omnidirectional signal but at a lesser distance um, just remember that uh, will the dipole has to be uh, perpendicular to your quad antenna uh, this mox antenna has to be aligned uh, with the antenna itself on the quad to get the better uh, range possible anyway with one watt of power and the LS we're not supposed to be running out uh, of range anytime soon uh, even though I'm curious uh, to use that uh, 2.4 gigahertz in band uh, I'm uh, used to the, uh, 900, the 900 hertz so for now I'm just going to stay with uh, the dipole antenna because it's supposed to be overkill for what I'm going to do right now So now I'm going to uh, remove my own module from my radio and put this one uh, in place. Uh, let's, on the way, uh, just look at the two together. Um, they're sensibly the same weight. Uh, the uh, fan size seems the same. So uh, this new beta FPV module should not have any uh, problem with cooling. Uh, you can see that the beta FP module is much uh, lower profile than the Namimno one, like only the fan itself uh, bulge out while the rest is going to be uh, flush with the radio, uh, except for that pretty much similar, like um, this is the first version of the Namimno, so uh, before the pot also uh, an OLED display uh, and and joystick uh, on it, but they have one pretty much uh, similar to this one. And that's not that the Namimno one and the Beta FPV one are supposed to be uh, right now for this range of price uh, the best modules you can get uh, with ELS. Okay, let's plug that into our radio and don't forget uh, to connect your antenna before you power it on. Okay, let's power the remote on. Here, a lot of RGB cool lights. Uh, this doesn't look like the regular uh, OLED display of ELS because this is the uh, better FP fork of ELS. Um, you can see that everything uh, is functional. The, uh, the display and uh, the joystick work the way it is supposed to, be, to do. It was uh, corrected from the first uh, uh, version of the software. You could have seen reviews and complaints about uh, on the internet before. Uh, basically, when um, Beta FPV um, made the first ELS module with OLED display, it was before uh, this was integrated into uh, ELS by the ELS team. So they did that by themselves and there was some iteration bef before uh, it was fully functional and uh, anyway now uh, this is all supported by the main ELS fork and we're going to update that right now and enjoy all of the ELS goodness so I've set that into Wi-Fi mode with the joystick and I'm going to do the update right now you want to update it to uh, the main fork because uh, no doubt know that uh, the hardware is fully supported by the main fork. Uh, it's not obvious that uh, Beta FPV is going to continue uh, improving his own software version and uh, give you all the bug fixes and and everything the ELS team does every day. Anyway, this way it's going to be you're going to get all the improvement in real time and not waiting for a third uh, side. So uh, I'm not going to enter in all the detail of uh, the update because I have another video about that. Uh, but we want uh, 2.2.0 or at least 2.2 uh, to get um, the full functionalities of uh, the OLED display and joystick. 
So the device category beta FPV 2.4 GHz, device uh, beta FPV uh, 2400TX micro 1, uh, 1 watt version. I'm going to do all, all the regular configuration. I want it in Wi Fi. I'm setting everything. Don't forget to set to uh, choose a regular regulatory do domain. You can choose a non uh, restricted one anyway. Uh, you binding phase which is the main interest of um, of flashing your own uh, firmware so this way you're not going to have uh, to bind every receiver with your uh, module and a uh, home wi-fi uh, for uh, further uh, use of all the um, wi-fi functionality and network functionality that ELS uh, gives you with the new uh, software versions. Anyway, let's build. This is going to take a bit of time because uh, this is the first time uh, flashing. I'm compiling this particular version of the firmware, so it's going to download all, all of the files. And anyway, let's skip that. So when it finishes, it opens uh, the directory where it uh, have written the new uh, firmware, and we're going to flash that. Uh, you need to put your radio in update mode so you can do that with the joystick on the back and the OLED display or uh, alternatively you can do that uh, the regular way with the Lua script uh, from your radio. And in both of the cases, uh, the LED on the module is going to start blinking red, which means uh, it is in Wi-Fi mode. Uh, and on the OLED display, you can see the SSID of uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot you have to connect to and the password that you're going to use, which is basically Xpass LRS. And uh, also the IP address you need to input in your navigator if uh, this doesn't open automatically this page. So I'm browsing for uh, my firmware. Open, then update. It starts and it's going actually to fail. And this is because of the dips which we were talking about earlier. Basically, this module can be in three different modes, and that is uh, update firmware, which is with one and two uh, switch up, uh, operating mode with three and four up, and uh, update backpack with uh, five, six, and seven up. So you will need to switch uh, down the operate mode and on the uh, update firmware mode. So oh, let's do that the best, uh, in my opinion, is to use those tweezers uh, this because you don't want to break these switches. You definitely don't want to break them. So one and two up and the other door. And don't forget after you update to uh, switch them back on operating mode. Hopefully this time uh, it's going to work. Uh, it's not always the case. It doesn't work 100% of the time. So if it fails, just try again. And that's probably going to work the second or third time. Okay, seems that I am lucky. It's still charging. Still charging. Okay, and target mismatch. This is because uh, we are not updating it. We're switching it from the beta FP fork to the main ELS fork. So this is definitely okay. I'm going to press flash anyway. Welcome 
to HTX. Switch warning. Okay, so uh, this is the main screen of uh, the last version of ELS uh, that support uh, both the joystick, uh, the LED, the colored LED, and uh, the OLED screen of this module and of other uh, screen modules as well, like the Namimno one. So uh, I'm going, if I press down, nothing. This is blocked because it's a uh, protection mode, so you don't mess with settings without wanting it. Long press, it's going to give me this menu, and then uh, up or down give me the different uh, menus. If I'm going left, I'm entering this, and then I can change uh, with up and down again. And then left or right again, and I'm back to the main menu. Before I can tell if this is the best product ever or not, uh, I need definitely to fly a shit ton of packs with this module and all of my drones and a lot of days and a lot of nights and a lot of different situations and only then I will be able to tell the absolute uh, uh, truth of this module but what I can tell right now is that it's a product that looks good, that feels uh, a quality product. It, the fact that uh, it worked, that uh, the joystick and the display work uh, out of the box means that uh, Beta FPV is hearing the criticism from the community and is willing to uh, improve both his product, his reputation and his development. So this is good news. And uh, that's nice. I mean, I love the way it sits on my on my radio. Uh, it worked pretty fast, pretty well. It's doing what I want to. Let's see over time. So stay tuned for the review videos and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss it. And have fun.